you will be interested in this range of machines that we have collected here. This is the state of field system of an autosynchronous motor, and you will be particularly interested, I think, to notice that here we have a wide slot and a small amount of iron, and here a narrow slot and a large amount of iron. This feature, in conjunction with a concentrated winding, ensures maximum efficiency. Now, the purposes of the autosynchronous motor are really twofold. Firstly, to provide the power necessary to drive fans, compressors, and the like. And secondly, to correct the power factor of the system. This is a finished machine, and I'd like you to observe this particular component, the exciter, which, permanently connected in the system, ensures that you have a machine which is just as easy to start as a standard flippering motor. Now, sometimes it is desirable that we have a totally enclosed motor, as, for instance, in dusty, dirty atmospheres, sometimes desirable in, for instance, power stations or boiler houses. Now, in this machine, we have a unique system of ventilation, which I particularly like to describe to you. Here, you see, we draw in the air in the center of the machine, and it passes along ducts, which I'll now show you. By an ingenious device, we cut these channels out of the backs of the lamination. And in this portion here, we have a tunnel through which the internal air circulates. You will observe how easy it is to clean these channels. Now, many of you will recognize here a traction motor. These machines are used for driving electric locus, tram cars, trolley buses, and battery vehicles. Notice how compact the machine is. One essential of a traction motor design is that it shall run at high temperatures and keep running. Now come to Birmingham to another factory of the group where electric battery trucks are made. You have seen these mighty atoms in railway stations, docks, and in 101 industries. Perhaps you've noticed them at work in these factories. In this erection line, for instance, we follow the familiar production sequence. First the frame, then the motor and the axles, followed by the propeller shaft, the steering gear, the battery box, and the connecting cable. The procedure is the same, whether the truck is an elevating truck which picks up a loaded stillage, or has a fixed platform. Now a battery crane truck, which incidentally has seen 20 years service, brings the battery, made at New Malden, and lowers it into position. Charged overnight, this battery will run the truck for a full day's work. The battery in position, the cover plate are fitted, and the operator plugs in the connecting cable, so completing production. A tester now takes over, and the truck is put through its paces. There are two tons of concrete blocks on the platform of this truck. Great stress is placed upon efficient control, braking, and safety. Or come to Leicester, to the factory where electric road vehicles are made. The battery electric is the ideal vehicle for house-to-house -house deliveries. It is easy to drive and to get in and out of. It's silent and clean, needs the minimum of maintenance, and it's by far the cheaper vehicle to run. The chassis, the motor, axles and steering gear are all standardized components, but the bodies are varied according to the trade for which they're acquired. The baker's van is fully enclosed. The dairyman likes open sides. All are catered for along these assembly lines. You can see on the roads today 10 and 20 hundredweight delivery vans, two, two and a half and five ton flat deck lorries, and seven and twelve cubic yard refuse collectors. In fact, seven out of ten electrics on the road today are Morrison electric cars. Come back to Chelmsford for a moment to the Crumpton Parkinson switchgear works. Although standardized components are extensively used, every installation demands individual design. 
with the required for an electricity supply authority or a factory substation. Here we have an example of heavy metal clad switch gear for important service and for which great attention to test and initial adjustment, particularly contact, is necessary. Every stage of manufacture requires specialized skill and care, as here in the insulation and taping of the high voltage joints and conductors, and the fitting and assembly of the unit buzz bar chamber. This is substation and distribution switchgear being erected in the shop. Upon completion, each equipment is subjected to the usual over voltage test, but in addition, breakdown and flashover tests are made on typical units to ensure maintenance of a satisfactory insulation margin. At these works is located the Crumpton Parkinson High Power Testing Station, one of the ASTA group of test stations operated by the National Physical Laboratory. This is the control room, located some distance from the testing cell. The control engineer in charge of the station is making his preliminary adjustments prior to the setting of the equipment for a test. The engineers in the station are preparing to start the machines, which are capable of producing energy equivalent to one million horsepower for the period required for the short circuit testing of circuit breakers. The temperatures of all parts of the plant are carefully recorded. The cooling water and lubricating oil pumps are running. All is ready. The high pressure oil pumps are operated to ease starting and the signal to start is given. On closing the switch, the 20 ton rotor commences to revolve, taking 20 minutes to gain its full speed of 3000 revolutions per minute. In the meantime, the control engineer is making the necessary calculations arranging for the correct connections of the reactors and adjusting the excitation current of the generator to ensure the test condition. He then signals to the machine room engineer to stand by. The control engineer has a final checkup on his side that all is ready. In the machine room, the engineer has a last look round and then presses the ready to start button, which lights a lamp on the control desk. The test button is then pressed and the test commences. The switch in the test cell, the generator up to speed and ready for the test. The master controller accurately times operations to one hundredth of a second and controls the sequence of switching. The electromagnetic and cathode ray oscillographs are recording the results. Generator field switch is operating, switch operating in test cell. The cathode ray oscillograph was specially designed for operation with the plant and records the transient voltage at arc extinction. The film travels at 100 meters per second. Time marks are made at 10,000 per second. The engineer removes the exposed record from the oscillograph for development. These oscillograms are typical records of the test results. Sometimes switch gear is deliberately tested to destruction to determine the factor of safety. The control engineer is now readjusting his circuit and gives instructions for the changing of the connection. To observe the performance of the mechanism and contacts, the effect of failure is reproduced by replacing the standard circuit breaker tank with one of light construction. The value of current in the test circuit is determined by adjustment of the connected external reactor. Connection changes are automatically signaled back to the control room by signal lamp. The operation current is switched on, the circuit conditions set. The signals, stand by and ready, go through, followed by the start signal. The greatly increased power caused failure of the lightly constructed switch tank, the oil caught fire, the fire protection apparatus was brought into use and the flames extinguished. It's a natural step from switchgear to transformers, which are made at the works of the British Electric Transformer Company Limited at Hayes Middlesex, another of the CP group. Here is a collection of the babies of the transformer world. Compare them with a the larger one. The wire and strip used for winding are insulated with manila paper or cotton yarn in these machines. Insulation design is fundamental to transformer performance and is under the closest control. 
It takes a long time to make a good winder, and years of training, starting from the school leaving age, are necessary to acquire the technique. Blueprints and specifications are issued by the technical department, and every operator must be capable of using them. By far the largest percentage of the work carried out in this factory is of an individual, specifically designed character, so that operators very rarely have successive jobs of the same type.